So I just wanted to make a video about the Canon 400mm f2.8 IS USM lens. I'd watched a couple reviews before I got this lens and they focused more on the specs uh, and how the lens looks on paper more so than the actual ownership and, and using the lens. So uh, I'd like to try to fill that gap uh, and help anybody out who's potentially looking at a lens like this. So uh, hopefully this is helpful to somebody and uh, we'll see how it goes. So what is it? Uh, obviously it's a 400 millimeter prime lens uh, with a 2.8 aperture, which is why it has such a huge front element there and also why it's so huge in general. Uh, it was introduced in 1999, so it's over 20 years old now. Uh, it was obviously primarily designed to be used uh, with sports photographers and uh, you know nature photography, that kind of thing. Anything where you're gonna need this kind of reach, uh, but also where you want the best image quality and you, you know you need that kind of low uh, 2.8 aperture for whatever reason low light or you just want to separate the subject from the background uh, the reason i think this is relevant now is because if you have a, a more basic setup like a, what i had was a 150 to 600 sigma and then i upgraded to a 70 to 200 canon lens 2.8 with a 2x converter if you have one of those setups or something similar I think this is the next logical progression uh, where you're going away from a zoom with a variable aperture or a relatively uh, high aperture and you're going into something that has a lot more potential for image quality but does make some sacrifices. So I sort of alluded to this but uh, earlier why would you get something like this? Uh, I think the obvious answer is image quality which means a lot of different things to a lot of different people but the basics are image sharpness, contrast, and color, um, which are all excellent on this lens, and you've kind of, you'd kind of expect that. But uh, in terms of sharpness especially, uh, you can just shoot at 2.8 and not worry about it. You're getting plenty of detail, and it's probably sharper at 2.8 than like a 70 to 200 at f5.6 or something, which is a really big deal because if you want to blur the background, but you also don't want to lose detail, you can do that with this lens. Uh, and there's also sort of just a look and feel to that kind of image that you can't replicate with something that either has a variable zoom or the lowest apertures like f4 or something. Uh, if you've ever used like a 24 to 70 f4 versus a 2.8, you know that there's really nothing you can do. I mean, you can use some, uh, use compression strategically, uh, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be a lot easier if you just have that 2.8 aperture. So that's a huge benefit. Uh, also the colors and the contrast, the colors of this lens, I don't wanna say they're more accurate because I think that's kind of arbitrary, but it's nice to have a good neutral starting point, which I think this does have. And there's also no irregularities or, or weird colors that you're correcting. Uh, it just allows you to start from sort of a blank canvas and then put whatever spin you want on the image whatever style you want and uh, you don't run into any weird issues where you just can't get rid of some pink hue or something, which has happened to me previously with other setups. So I think that's the biggest takeaway in terms of image quality and sharpness is that I just don't have to work around anything. Uh, you know, I, I can just shoot at 2.8, uh, not have to worry about some haze or anything or weird colors because of uh, the way the light's reflecting off something. Uh, I, I just know that it's going to look good and you know if I do want to adjust colors or something I can do that in a creative sense and not as much in a corrective sense which uh, is really important for me and I think it would be important to anybody's workflow to be more creative and less corrective uh, it's a huge time saver if you're using Intellifoto more often than not you're using that because you don't have the option to get closer to me that means that if you don't have that kind of option and that mobility, then you need to rely on the lens to do a little bit more of the work. And so, for example, I do a lot of uh, motorsports uh, type photography and you can't get closer sometimes. And you also have objects in the background that you don't necessarily want to distract from the image. And so having that 2.8 aperture and it being usable uh, is a big deal in order to make an image less distracting uh, and more impactful. Also, I have used this lens with a, a 2x converter, and I do run into some of that uh, 
that haze and sometimes some weird color and contrast but I think that's to be expected anytime you use a 2x converter and you just have to know that going in and as long as you know that you know that's no fault of this lens in particular I think that's more to do with a 2x converter and uh, that's just something that's going to happen if you know <laughs> and a 2x essentially turns this into it literally turns this into an 800 millimeter um, f 5.6 lens so you are getting a considerable increase in, in range sometimes it's worth it sometimes it's not you know it's sort of uh, kind of a gamble, which uh, it's nice to have that option though. So it, it can be used. You don't lose too much detail. I found that I just get a lot less uh, hits in terms of keepers uh, using the 800. That's probably due to a variety of things. One of them being the aperture, probably running slower shutter speeds as a result. And just the fact that you're dealing with an 800 millimeter zoom. Uh, so it's going to be a lot harder to capture things in motion, especially when you're hand holding without a monopod. The bottom line in terms of image quality, uh, in my opinion, is that you get more usable images, more keepers with a lens like this versus other setups because you're not having to work around or compromise what, you're, what you have in your mind, what your vision is for that particular shot. Uh, and you can just shoot whatever you want and you know that the lens is going to perform and give you a good enough image that you know when you're editing later in post, um, you're not correcting anything, you're not having to deal with any weird issues or thinking, ah, you know, I should have stopped down there. There's not enough detail here. So that's the main benefit. And I think that's the main take takeaway in terms of image quality is that a lens like this just doesn't get in your way uh, and just allows you to do your job instead of having to work around the lens. So, and th I think that's a pretty big deal. So moving on to what I think uh, is really important. I think not really talked about that much in, in any kind of camera gear review is the usability, what it's like to actually own this thing and use it, um, and the considerations that I think someone should have if they're looking to buy something like this. So the elephant in the room uh, literally is uh, <laughs> the bulk of this thing. It's also pretty heavy. It comes in just under 12 pounds, so basically 12 pounds, uh, just the lens alone. So whatever body you put on that, you're going to be adding to it. And that can be a problem depending on what you're doing. If you're mounting this on a monopod, it's not such a big deal, um, but there are more considerations than just when you're shooting on the monopod. You still have to carry this thing around. You still have to uh, you know, hike out to where you're gonna shoot from. And uh, it kind of feels like ball and chain sometimes, uh, especially if you only have one body and you're switching between different lenses. And so even when you're not using this, you can't just put it in a bag uh, you're going to be lugging it around on its own and have to put it down on the ground or somewhere where it's not going to get, uh, you know, fall over with the monopod or something. So I've often um, had to leave it behind because I know that or I decided basically that I was going to get different types of shots and I didn't want to haul this around. And invariably you always feel like you need what you don't have. And so you'll see something, ah, I wish I had the 400, but sometimes it's just not practical to just drag it around everywhere and use it once. You might have a different opinion, uh, but it's something that you need to know and consider um, when you're looking at something like this, and in particular this lens. Um, the newer models, uh, which are way more expensive, are a lot lighter, literally half the weight uh, for the version 3. I think it's uh, around 6 pounds. And they also moved the, the lens elements further back uh, to make it balance a little bit better, not be as front heavy, which uh, I have used that lens and it's much nicer <laughs> in terms of uh, maneuverability and uh, mobility in general. So just know that going into it. Uh, if you can drop the 12 grand, then um, I don't even know why you're looking at this lens anyway. So I, I don't think that's so much a comparison, but it's just something to know. So you can handhold this lens. It's not impossible. Um, it's difficult and you're not going to be able to do it all day. It just depends on what you do. So for example, if I'm at a motorsports event or you know taking nature photos or something, most of the time I'm going to have it on a monopod and it's not so much of an issue. Maybe I am hand holding sometimes, but it's rare enough that you know it's not too fatiguing. But for example, at like an air show or something or whatever scenario you can come up with where you're not going to be able to use a monopod, it's going to be pretty difficult. Um, 
but it can be done. And I don't think that should put you off, but you should just know the limitations. Like I said, you're not going to be able to do that all day. There's no way. Um, so maybe a mix of monopod use and handheld use, but just know that it can be done and the stabilization uh, is pretty good. Uh, I was pretty surprised by it. I was able to get some really good panning shots handheld. It, it, it never held me back. And if anything, it was really nice to have that stabilization, uh, especially the panning mode. It has a general mode and a panning mode. And uh, I was pretty surprised at the performance of the stabilization. It makes it much more usable uh, than you would expect at 400 millimeters. The focus is also pretty good. I don't want to say it's the best ever, uh, but I would say it's comparable to a 70 to 200 or to really most Canon L lenses. It's a little, it's an older lens, obviously, so the tech isn't as good as the newer models, but it's never been a hindrance to me. It's never cost me uh, a, a great shot because the camera just wouldn't focus. Uh, most of the time I'm using the focus bracket feature, you know, the little switch um, where you can choose not to focus across the whole range, which speeds it up quite a bit. It's never gotten in the way for me personally. And uh, the only time it's really been an issue is when I'm using a 2X converter. Again, that's more to do with the 2X than it is with this lens. And the fact that it, it turns this into an 800 millimeter, so it's pretty hard to track some of certain subjects. I also want to mention that this lens has been pretty reliable for me. I've used it in light rain and, um, you know, I don't baby it too much. And uh, I've never haven't had any issues with the, the focus or the the lenses, or the elements getting misaligned or anything, um, it's still performing really well. And like I said, I'm not babying it too much. I do travel uh, with it in its case that it comes with, um, but I guess it depends. You can probably buy them used without the case. I'd highly recommend getting one with the case to protect it. Um, it is a nice case. It's good to have that extra protection because if you just throw it in the trunk of your car and it's rolling around, you're definitely going to damage it. It's just a nice thing to have, so I, I'd make sure you get the case, and it, it might even be better to invest in a dedicated Pelican case or something like that. So the bottom line with this lens is that as long as you understand the considerations that you need to think about before you purchase something like this, you should be okay. The considerations being the weight and the bulk, not just uh, using it, uh, but also traveling with it, moving with it, uh, as well as the cost. They're about $3,500, depending on the condition and where you're buying it from. So you need to take that into consideration, as well as the lack of versatility with this being a prime lens. So something like a 100 to 400, you can just throw in your bag, throw it on when you need it, and then uh, you know it's not weighing you down so much that you need a separate case or you need to carry it outside your bag or something. And you also have that bottom end of 100, so you can get a little bit wider field of view and not have to worry about it, but you can also zoom into 400. With this, obviously, you just have 400. But the benefits of that is you're getting superior image quality in terms of sharpness, color, contrast, uh, but also just the look and feel of the image, I think, is just better. So you have to decide, basically, if uh, image quality is important enough to you that would warrant something like this. And I think only if it does is it worth it? Because if you just want a 400 millimeter lens, I don't think this is the lens to get. Uh, you can maybe spring for the 100 to 400, which is going to give you a lot more capability in a, a wider range. But obviously, you're not going to have the same image quality. And I know there's plenty of situations where that's perfectly acceptable. So again, as long as the image quality is worth it to you, then this lens is going to be great. With that being said, I hope this was helpful, and I hope um, me rambling helped <laughs> somebody make a decision, or at least get more information on what this lens actually is. Um, those are sort of my thoughts on it. Uh, from here, I'd like to go into a, a sort of detailed view uh, up close on this lens so you can see all the features, the button locations, um, you know, just what it is close up. So. So like I mentioned, this is going to be the tabletop section where we just take a closer look at this behemoth and uh, just look at some of the details and where everything's located and, and things like that. So right up at the front, 
Uh, we obviously have the lens hood, uh, which is pretty huge and it makes this lens look a lot bigger uh, than it actually is. Um, and it's just mounted with this uh, set screw here. You can put it in any position that you want. I put it here because I use it as sort of a reference point uh, when the lens is on a monopod, so I sort of uh, know where I'm at. Um, but uh, it just comes right off. And you can set it aside. Don't... <laughs> I recommend not losing or breaking that because uh, if you look up replacements, they are extremely expensive. Um, also, real quick, uh, hopefully you can see, but uh, on both the front of the lens here and on uh, the lens hood, you have this uh, hard rubber here, which uh, allows you to put the lens straight down on its nose like this. Um, which is particularly nice because this lens is so heavy. Um, that's a good way to put it on the ground or, um, you know, if you're on pavement or something where it's going to be actually more stable that way than it would be if you laid it on its side or something. Um, because this is a pretty wide base, um, it's actually pretty stable. And it's so heavy that it's actually pretty difficult to knock over. Um, moving back. Uh, you have, uh, these are interesting, they're these um, essentially AF, AF stop buttons. Most modern cameras that I've used ha have that ability to program one of the buttons um, on the camera itself to perform that function, so I never use these. They're also pretty uh, lame buttons. You can't really hear a click or feel a click, so uh, I just... They're not particularly useful, but they're there if you do want to use them, uh, and they're not in the way if you don't use them, which is nice. Uh, you then have this control here, which uh, if you look on the side, that bottom switch there, the focus preset, uh, when you, you essentially can set a, uh, like the name implies, a focus preset, uh, a set point to focus at, and then you would return to that focus point by turning this ring. I, I've never used it. I can't imagine a situation really where I'd want to use it. Um, I just think that the focus is good enough already that you'd spend more time and hassle fiddling with this uh, than you would just letting the autofocus do its job. I mean, unless you really needed to guarantee that you return to that focus point because you know that's going to be like the money shot, I just don't think uh, think it's particularly useful. Again, though, it's out of the way enough where it's not a big deal, so no harm, no foul kind of thing. Uh, the next thing is the focus ring, and um, it's pretty smooth. It's not um, amazing, though. You can actually hear mine squeaking a little bit. So that's nice, um, but uh, it's fine. It's uh, it's pretty smooth. I will say though, the position and the shape is not very useful. If you're hand holding this, I mean, you're trying to operate this with your thumb, or because you can't really hold it here. Because if you hold it here, it's just gonna you're gonna be uh, focusing when you don't want it to because it's so heavy. Um, so I don't. Think it's in a particularly good position. I think it would have been better if it was further back, um, back here or somewhere, where if you were holding it by the tripod foot, it would be easier to use. But that's where it is. To be honest, I'm not really using manual focus that often anyway, so I don't think it's too big a deal. You obviously have a focus window, which uh, pretty much Every Canon lens has any L lens, or really any lens that they make. So that's pretty standard. Focus distance is anywhere from uh, three meters on the low end to infinity, obviously. Uh, so then we have the buttons on the side here. Um, top one is uh, if you want to bracket the focus, you have three meters to infinity. 3 meters to 10 meters and 10 meters to infinity. So that should suit your needs uh, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, I typically have it in um, 10 meters to infinity. 
uh, just because I'm not typically that close to my subject. Again, you're using a telephoto, so that's probably going to be the most used section. And uh, the focus is pretty quick there. So uh, autofocus switch and then your stabilizer on off switch. Uh, you do have two stabilizer modes, uh, one for normal use and then one for panning, which will only stabilize the vertical axis and allow you to pan left and right without uh, the stabilizer sort of working against you. And then, like I said before, that uh, focus preset uh, control switch and button. <laughs> you also have a, a lanyard loop here, as well as right there. Uh, I, th I have seen people use a strap with this. Um, I think that's crazy because it's so heavy. I just, it doesn't make any sense to me, but if, if you think that's useful, great. You obviously have a, a plaque here. Just telling you what it is. And then uh, the tripod foot itself. So this is pretty cool. Um, uses this knob here to uh, <coughs> basically set screw. So you can unscrew it and the body will rotate now. And there's also a detent so that every 90 degrees, so right there, right there. And I think I missed one, but you get the idea. So that's kind of nice because if you ever want to flip it around, you'll know exactly when you're at uh, the exact opposite side, which is uh, perfectly straight up and down, which I think is kind of nice. You can't actually take it off, or at least I haven't figured out how to take it off. Um, so just know that. Then we also have, uh, this takes drop-in filters. So right now I have a polarizer. So the polarizer itself has a, a geared wheel, and so it interacts with the little gear here, and so that's how you would uh, adjust the polarizer. It's in a pretty terrible spot to actually reach it. Um, you know, if I'm shooting like this, I can't, I mean, it's pretty difficult or to even find, let alone use. So it's more of a, you know, hopefully you have the time to adjust it, or you just sort of set it and hope for the best. And, um, but uh, you can also swap this out for whatever um, filter you want that obviously fits it. Um, moving back, well, I guess we'll just look at this real quick. Obviously, uh, it is weather sealed, so you have a gasket back here. There's also a rubber gasket here for the filter mounts. So on the underside here, we have uh, two uh, points to uh, attach a monopod or tripod mount. Um, the bigger one's a little bit more stable, and I find it balances better there. Um, but it's nice that they have uh, both of them. So maybe if you don't have uh, that size, you can just use this one. You can also swap this foot out. Uh, there's just four screws here. And then you can swap out to an aftermarket one that uh, fits that pattern, obviously. So that is the lens. Uh, that's all the details of it. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. Obviously, you can see this one's a little bit worn, but uh, mechanically, it's doing just fine, other than that uh, squeak in the, the focus ring. But uh, I, like I said, I've never had any issues with it. It's perf been performing uh, really quite well. And uh, Hopefully that's given you a really good look at the lens and given you some decent information to at least help you uh, decide what you want to go with. Um, so, um, yeah, let me know if that was helpful or not, and uh, thanks for watching. And the fact that it, it turns this into an 800 millimeter, so it's pretty hard to track some of certain subjects. You did it again! Who do you think you are? I need you to get out. I don't, I don't have the card space for this. You can't just waltz in here. No, you can't. So the Canon 400 mm. Wait, this isn't a lens.